Sili mnaona maji mlikuwa hata mbadilisha rangi mlikuwa rangi ya green sasa na hiyo ile tap anasaidia maji kunoshoka tunaomba ilikuwa hata hata Kenya is one of the most water scarce countries in Africa and a frontliner to the worst impacts of climate change 15% of Kenyans rely on unimproved water sources such as ponds, shallow wells, and rivers, while 41% lack access to basic sanitation solutions. This is particularly true for arid and semi-arid areas, which occupy over 89% of the country's landmass and is home to about 38% of the Kenyan population. Losuk village in Samburu County has particularly been feeling the effects. To get water to drink, they use such holes, but the water isn't clean and sometimes runs dry. When this happens, people need to get water from an even dirtier source, the dam. The Losuk Dam is the largest water source in the area. It serves both animals and human beings. Regina Lenchuke is here to wash her clothes. But the dam water has become very dirty over the years, as the area chief, Philip Lerno, explains. green sasa. So, the Samburu Girls Foundation has been a safe haven for Losk community. Their main task is to rescue girls facing early marriages and female genital mutilation and offer them education. But on top of that, the school is providing locals in need with water. Masi Wanderi, the school's project manager, explains that the man wanted water. He wanted to fetch water, but I've directed him to use the gate so that the watchman can help him with that. The watchman does as instructed and fetches water for him. The school has a borehole and hydro panels which use sunlight to harvest water from air. That is how it manages to assist community members like Mtsele Martile. <laughs> But the donated hydro panels are currently broken down and as such, the school is depending on the borehole water, limiting the amount of water it can share with the community. On a normal day, I think we use about 20,000 liters and by the time we are going to drain the tank, it's not even enough for the gas. This has necessitated new water recycling solutions to fully utilize all the available water in the school. Omiflow Solutions, a wastewater treatment company based in Nairobi, is in charge of the water recycling project at the school. So we make water water again. So industrial wastewater, domestic wastewater, all types of sewage. We take through a system that we've designed ourselves and try to give people water they can use on the back end. The scientific name for this process is phytoremediation a technique involving the uptake of contaminants by plant roots. If you have a, free, a system that's efficient, it's uh, either costing you a lot of money in terms of energy. You have people who are using exhausters every week. Um, so this eliminates some of those issues. Omiflow is the only company using this plant-based biotechnology to recycle wastewater in Kenya. We use plants. So our system doesn't use any energy or chemicals, it's 100% plant-based. And you can see there's no smell, you're sitting right next to it. So uh, it's a completely green way to recycle water. So the project we're doing is for Samburu Girls Foundation. So we want to capture all the wastewater, take it through our system like this, and supply it back to the toilets at least for flushing and keeping the air green. The plants are grown in a greenhouse until they mature enough to use for recycling wastewater. 
Leonard Kimori is leading the Omiflu team for the groundbreaking of the Samburu Girls Foundation project. So uh, these are the plants, the microfarads. We install the plants in the holes provided and then we will install into the water. I will demonstrate just how it goes, like they fit into each other. This is the young, it's a young plant of the of the microphyte. You can see the root can grow up to one and a half meters deep in the water. The project will utilize the wastewater from this newly installed biodigester, which is using wastewater from the septic tank connected to the girls' dormitories. For the installation, the team starts by clearing the area, taking measurements of the lagoon, excavating, dam lining, and finally floating the plants in the lagoon. Using recycled water to flush the toilets means that the borehole water can be spared for more pressing needs such as drinking. It will take four to six months for the system to be fully functional as the plants take a while to grow and look like the one in Nairobi. As it is, the water cannot be used for drinking as it would require further treatment and tests. I think people are not, at least in Kenya, are not psychologically ready for that. Even though in many scenarios, people are using water that's downstream from someone else. It can, however, be reused for purposes such as landscaping, flushing toilets, and irrigation. Some merits of using this technology are that it does not consume any energy, is chemical free, and it improves natural aesthetics. The plants live off of the wastewater and only require pruning. This means only one installation of the system is required, making building and maintenance costs lower than that of other recycling methods. There is however a limitation of using this kind of technology to recycle wastewater. The disadvantage is you need a bit of space, that's it. But you can be creating with that, you can put it on the roof, um, you can see it looks like a garden. Similar systems by Omiflow are already in use around the country. Mshila's hope is that the Losu community will benefit from the newly installed water waste recycling system at Samburu Girls Foundation. That school is fortunate enough to have um, a borehole. Um, so if we allow them to recycle the water and use less, then the community that's adjacent to them has more access to it. Yeah. He says the same technology can be applied at the Losu Dam. There's a few ways to do it. So if the levels are not changing too much, you can actually float these directly on the dam and it will be constantly improving that. Or you can direct some of the water from the dam through the system and then to our collection point. Until a long-term solution is found, Losu community members like Regina and Msele will continue to survive on the limited water sources available.